All right. Well, hey, it's it's 9.03 p.m., so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Um, I just shared a little earlier. I think you're going to be thrilled uh, at the information that you're going to hear tonight. Uh, we're we're going to have a special offer for you at the uh, end of the webinar. You definitely <coughs> check out. Um, if you were on the last webinar that we did with Alex, uh, you know, you'll, you'll know the power of tactical arbitrage. And since that last webinar, which we did about a month ago, Alex has been working tirelessly to add new features uh, to TA. And so he's going to share some of those tonight. Um, and uh, if you're not already a TA member, I highly encourage you to check it out. Um, there is a free trial that you can do. Uh, it is a powerful software. And uh, if you were on the last webinar, you know that this is actually a newer software that Alex originally developed for himself. Um, and then about two or three months ago, I think, he opened it up uh, to the public. And so it is still kind of like just getting started. Um, and so that right there, that man right there, that is Alex Moss coming to us all the way from Australia. Um, and what time is it uh, there in Australia, Alex? It's 11 in the morning, so it's, I mean, it's good for me. I can do a webinar and then go out for, for a nice lunch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. So I'm going to hand it over um, to my partner, Nathan. And uh, Nathan, I'll let you if you want to do any more intros before we get into the uh, webinar. Yeah, hey, guys. Sorry, my uh, webcam's uh, not cooperating with me tonight, so I'm just... Uh, just a floating thumbnail for right now. But, uh, but basically, I just wanted to, I don't know, I don't want to get too basic here. I think, you know, most people are familiar with online arbitrage or even tactical arbitrage and are either using the tool or heard about it. Um, but just real quick for anyone uh, joining us or who's going to watch the replay, who doesn't know what online arbitrage is, basically uh, going to online retail stores, most of them well-known retail stores, finding products that you can then sell on Amazon, for a profit and take advantage of the arbitrage opportunity. So what uh, tactical arbitrage does and what we're going to be talking about here is basically makes this process easier. Um, in the past, I know Andy, me and you, and we started doing it, it was basically doing online arbitrage was kind of just uh, combing through websites manually, right? Isn't that how you did it a lot? I mean, it was, there were some tools out there. There's things like Keepa and other tools out there that make it easier. Camel, Camel, Camel could kind of give you like price alerts. So there's always been some tools, as long, at least the last couple of years, um, but it still was a lot of manual work. And so what TA does is, you know, it almost like um, it takes out a barrier that's in there. And I kind of relate it to, it's almost like um, when we talk about private label, for anyone that does that or has heard about private label, you're taking out a middleman and you're kind of going right to the supplier. TA almost <coughs> takes out a, a part of that chain that makes it more difficult. And so you can literally set criteria, search criteria, step away from your computer. Isn't that right, Alex? I mean, I, I set search criteria sometimes, step away and come back, you know, 10, 20 minutes later, and then kind of just evaluate what's going on. So I think, Alex, last time you gave us an overview, I know since the last webinar, there's been a ton of changes and updates. You got, I think, double the amount of websites now <laughs> from the last time we talked. There's, uh, there's, there's over 200 websites. And actually... I just I just um, did a, an extensive hiring process and organized a new um, couple of guys yesterday to, for their for them to be employed full time for their only job to be adding new sites around the clock. So because I'm not happy with 230 sites, there needs to be 500 sites at least in there for people so to have to be able to select their favorite. Uh, site, see their favorite site on tactical arbitrage, choose that and source from it, um, you know, without any barrier or hesitation. So That's awesome. And, and I'm blown away about it whenever I see everything you're doing in your Facebook group is where I see you most of the time saying all the updates. But it's crazy because what I think about is the ratio of websites to users. I don't know how many users there are, but still the, the ratio has to be really good because I mean, 230 or, you know, the goal of 500 plus websites, uh, it's almost like there's a website per person or per couple people at least. It's, it's kind of crazy to think uh, how spread out it is. And what I think about is there's really just a lot of opportunity out there then. Um, not everyone's fishing from the same pond. It's not like everyone's only looking at Walmart or Target or something. There's a lot out there. 
it's funny, you know, because we, we've got a feature in there called um, Cache, and it's a really cool feature, and we're just releasing version 2.0 of that this week. And um, version 1.0 of Cache does this. If somebody has been to a website, um, you know, a certain category on a website, like I'll use Target Toys, for example. Right? Let's say someone's been to Target Toys in the last five days. You can set your cache to... Um, you know, three days, four days, five days. And if somebody's been there in that space of time, it'll, it'll collect all that data at 50 times the speed as if you were like doing it live, looking at each one. So, if, so one of the ways to know whether or not people have been in areas that you want to search is if there's no cache data, then and it's moving at a slower pace to collect the data, that means you're the only one who's been there in the last five days. So... So with that um, 230 sites that are on there, I find all the time there's so many unexplored areas that, um, that just haven't been tapped into because people think, well, you know, I haven't been to, you know, I, I'm not thinking about the finish line men's shoes or, or that this week or I haven't been to Think Geek in a while. And, and so there's, there's just so many sites on there now that I actually encourage people to sort of stay away from just hitting... Walmart toys or or Target toys because um, that stuff's always cached because that's where everybody always goes. Nevertheless, I will use that as an example today to show you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. It's it's kind of like a win lose situation. It's like when you find something that isn't cached, you're like, yes, it's unexplored. But then you're like, oh, I have to wait a little bit longer. But it's a win, it's a win lose situation there. But it's it overall, it's a really good concept, and I like it. Um, and so. We might be getting a little ahead of ourselves here. So, Alex, why don't you give us a quick overview for people that haven't used yeah. TA, the people that have used it or are current users, um, apologize. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the uh, Q&A box there. Um, so those tough questions that you have for Alex, we can get to then at the end. But let's just do an overview for people that haven't seen Tactical Arbitrage yet. Um, just give us the rundown of, like, you know, your, the main features and what it really is and how people can utilize it. Okay, so when I started TA, there was nothing at all, and I, I really, um, I, I, in Australia, I had so many stumbling blocks for like going out and making purchases because my credit card company would say, hey, you, you just made a $400 purchase to the States, we're closing down your credit card until you can get back <laughs> to us and explain to us whether this was an authorized purchase, and I'm like, just like the other 400 times that I, that I, I have purchased from um, stores in the United States, this one is also authorized. And there's so many hurdles and, you know, uh, places like, you know, Think Geek would say, you're doing online arbitrage, you know, you can't do it anymore because, especially because you're in Australia. And all the, all the time we'd, I'd get shut down here and shut down there and I thought, you know, I don't mind going through a website all day and selecting the title, copying that into Amazon, comparing the products, checking the seller calculation, finding the ones I want to buy. But what I do mind is at the end of the day having this big list of stuff that I want to I want to put in the shopping cart and buy, and then being cancelled at the at the at the very end and saying no, you can't buy it for various reasons. So I thought I need to make the major component of this super fast. So when I do get cut off, I can just move on to the next section, move on to the next. So so tactical arbitrage is born of me wanting to source faster, um, and and get to that. Get, get out of the office more, really. So it is all about um, sort of purchasing from one site, selling on Amazon, calculating what the uh, return on investment is after all of the FBA calculations is taken into account and spitting out results that I can use to make profit for my family as fast as possible. So that was originally all, from, all for me. And um, at some point uh, a few months ago, um, pro due, due to some things going on with my family, I decided to make it public, and uh, the response has been really good. But I can share my screen and, and, and show you my baby and, and what a lot of people are enjoying using now, if you like. Do you want me to show, share my screen? Yeah, yeah, go for that. I think that's, yeah, just jump into it and show us, you know, what it maybe like from a new user's perspective, what they would first see when they uh, registered for TA um, for a free trial, because that's what's cool about Tactical Arbitrage 2 is you provide a free trial for people. So let's pretend that this is our first trial in real quick and for the next five, 10 minutes, just go over, you know, what a new user might be looking at here. 
Okay, so once upon a time, a new user would come to this screen and they would be told, okay, now to continue, you need to go and get a, 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 an Amazon associate account and give me the product advertising keys because that was how I originally had it set up and there was a bunch of reasons for having it set up that way. But um, we've worked really hard and we've eliminated that now. So now all you need to do is you need to link it to your AWS keys, which is your seller central keys. The difference is it takes one minute. It's super quick. If you've ever used any kind of a repricer before, you, you will have given your MWS keys um, in that process, and it's just like a one minute process. And we've got like a PDF uh, which, uh, which shows the steps um, in just a couple of pages, and then basically you're in. Yeah, that's pretty standard. I think like inventory lab or repricers, pretty much everything asks for that. So it's just the same process that you know people would see in any other kind of third party software. Absolutely, and uh, it's been super simplified now. And 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 one little nice surprise is that um, by switching from AWS to MWS, it actually made the software a little bit faster. And so we were like, "Wow, that's a nice side effect." We were hoping to eliminate the associate account from the process, but to actually discover that it made the software faster as well, um, it's just win-win. So um, when a new user comes along, they'll see this product search page. Um, we've also got Amazon Flips now too, but I'll come back to that. Uh, so the product search page, um, you can set this for uh, the United States, for the United Kingdom or Canada at the moment, and it's set for US, and you've got all of these sites here to choose from, to source from. You see a couple here are blue. Um, these are ones I've added myself. One thing we've just recently added is, uh, is advanced user. So if you've got any kind of coding skills, um, you can actually add your own sites to source from just by entering a few little pieces of uh, XPath data. And then you can actually expand this above the 230 um, sites that we have already to uh, as many as you like as if you want to add your own sites. That's a little, that's a little um, add your own flavor type uh, add-on we've, we've just, just added as well. Alex, if you add your own site, you're the only one that's going to see it. No one else would see it. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. If you, it, you know, w we may, as a matter of course, end up adding the site that you have added, but that's if that happens, it's coincidental because we're just adding sites, particularly from the top um, twenty-five thousand Alexa ranked sites. So if you've added a top twenty-five thousand Alexa ranked site in your advanced panel, and uh, and it eventually appears on tactical arbitrage. You know that that may that may happen, but um, these things take time. And if you've added one, and it's it may sit there for months, uh, and be you may be the only person sourcing off that site. So, so that's really cool. I really wanted that in there because there's a, a lot of people out there who either know about um, XPath coding, or they've taken the time to place an ad on Upwork get somebody to come and add some sites for them, and, uh, and that gives them a little bit of an extra layer of edge um, when using this software, because you're, you're going to be the only person navigating that site to, to get those deals. Cool. So, so that would be extra, but for someone that has you know, no coding experience, isn't very tech savvy, they still get to start off with these you know, over All 200 these websites. websites that are yeah. black there. Okay. If, it's, if it's not blue, um, if it's not blue, it'll work for you. <laughs> yeah, so we, so we got a good number there, though. So there's a, there's a ton there, and any, any of those are open for the, for the user just starting out. There's heaps, and if you switch it to UK, you'll have another 30, and if you switch it to Canada, there's another 10 there. Sorry, Canada, I know I've got to catch up and get you to get, get you guys <laughs> some more. Um, I will, now, I've set the cache on here, so I can do a nice quick scan. Um, I'll, I'll pick Walmart. We actually have two flavors of Walmart. Um, there's, we use the API keys. Uh, if you want to insert your own Walmart API keys, then um, it, it goes by categories instead of by URLs. There's reasons for doing it. It's, um, the, when, you, when you use your URL, you're only going to get um, 1,000 products available to you for, per category because of the way that Walmart works. But if you use the API, you can access up to, say, 100,000 products in one category. So, mm. so Walmart's got a lot more in the, back, in the back door than they show on the front door, and the keys gives you access to the back door. So this is an, an option for people. 
So um, I'll just do like a little 10 page scan here. Uh, you can actually select use last filter settings, which will just bring up um, some of the, the most recent or the, the most recent filter you used. Um, if you wanted to go somewhere like uh, a cashback site, for example, Top Cashback has got 6% off Walmart for this week. So you can put in there reduce prices by 6%. So it's going to give you a more accurate return on investment uh, based on these calculations. And you can do that again if you've got, say, a gift card, granny discount card, or um, you know, you, you may have a, another another discount method that you want to put in there. Uh, then you can add your sales tax if applicable. I use a prep house in Oregon, so there's no sales tax for me. Um, you can say, I don't want to have a look at anything over a certain rank. You can remove products with more than a certain amount of sellers. You might decide not to look at oversized products or, or products that are out of stock. Um, you might say, Look, if, if, the, if the price at Amazon is $15 or less, or maybe even higher than that, uh, I don't want to look at those. And so these, filter, these filters will just reduce um, the items that you end up seeing more and more until you get a condensed number of, uh, number of products to look at that fulfill all of the criteria that you've set. Um, we also added this yesterday. The software can detect uh, if it makes a match with Amazon, but Amazon's actually out of stock. So, um, so let's say uh, there's a product on Walmart, it's matching with a product on Amazon, but Amazon is, has got zero items on the shelf. So this is a huge opportunity here. If, um, if Amazon doesn't have anything on the shelf, then you can, you can buy some stuff from Walmart and be the only person selling it on Amazon. So we've added in this filter here to include Amazon out of stock results just yesterday, actually. Uh, so once you've got all your filters set, hit the submit button. Now this is going to go faster than uh, a normal scan would go because we're using cache. Now you can see we've dramatically improved cache. So if somebody's been there before, um, it'll automatically start going through um, items one by one. And cache used to take about a product per second, but we've done it so that it can do close to 100 products a second now. Um, this doesn't speed up the live scams particularly, but it certainly speeds up if somebody's already been there for you to have a look if there's any deals. And you can see how Oh, yeah, so, so if someone's been there, let's say yesterday, and they ca cached it, and now you were able to just scan 1,000 products that quickly? That was 1,000 products, yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, uh, that's pretty quick. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty quick. I, the, we, 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 just, um, we just improved the caching speeds and uh, I'm, I'm a little blown away as to what, <laughs> how fast we improved them. Uh, I expected to double the speed on that, but I think we bounced it by about 50 times. <laughs> so now, if I go into view data, now there'll be products there. And this is products that somebody may have seen in the last five days because we're using cache. Um, and uh, over here, we, we, we did set to only show if the gross return on investment is at least 10%. And this is our view data page. So on the view data page, it's, it's going to give you um, the best methods to try and compare between the source item and the Amazon item. And whether or not it's a seller using uh, the sales rank or whether you mouse over the keeper chart here, and you can sort of see the spikes in sales there. Um, we also have a couple of other little matching features like uh, if, if the Amazon UPC has matched the, uh, in this case, a Walmart UPC, this will be green. Um, if it's a mismatch, it'll be red, and I'm sure I can find a red one here somewhere. There we go, down the bottom. And uh, <coughs> in these columns here, which are all sortable, you can sort, um, by gross return on investment, number of sellers, uh, the item that they, the order that they appeared on on the chart, and uh, using all of this data here, you should be able to start deciding what to put into your shopping cart. So um, this ants in the pants item is nine dollars ninety four. If you're using that uh, cashback voucher from Top 
top cash back, it gets it down to nine dollars thirty four. It's eighteen dollars eighty three at Amazon, um, which gives you twelve dollars eighty nine after Amazon takes their cut. A gross profit of three dollars fifty five and thirty eight percent return on investment. There's currently twenty two sellers on that, and it has a sales rank of twenty four thousand. So it's reasonably easy to read. Um, now. I, I've referred to this in previous webinars because I haven't released it yet, but up the top here, it shows exchange rates as well. So um, I'll try and get that out in the next week. Um, it's basically cross country so that if you're buying in Eng England to sell in the United States or buying in the United States to sell in England, um, it, it'll automatically do all the calculations for you, um, including shipping price from your country to, to the country you want to sell in. And so that's our new little cross-country feature that's coming um, probably within a week. Um, so I keep on adding features. I love it. I love it. There's so much coming. It's so cool. Um, so so much, Brian asks, uh, are you able to e export this information that we're seeing here to uh, like a CSV or an Excel spreadsheet? Are you able to export all this data? Sure. You just, just select download data and uh, it'll pop out a CSV for you. Now that's actually great for people who want to um, amortize the cost of their subscription with some Gumroad lists for their own friends or their own group. Um, I actually recommend people to um, operate the software, um, you know, make a few Gumroad lists and, uh, and you know, sell, sell 10 lists at $8 each and, and uh, you've pretty much paid for your cost of subscription for the month. Um, so there's plenty of ways that you can, you can monetize this, not only, uh, not only the conventional methods, but uh, in more lateral ways as well. We also have a saved list as well. So um, if you select this little heart button on the side here, it'll pop items that you want to have a look at later into a saved list. So um, kind of like a replan list, let's say you found some, some beauty items that, uh, that you want to just keep on sending in. You can make your own replan lists and you can sort those into different lists like a target toys list or you know, we've got a little folder structure in there you can sort of uh, you can fool around with in there and, and decide to have a look at you know different folders and and whatnot. So, so, uh, so if we go back uh, we have another question while we're on this page you can ask. Uh, <coughs> PJ asks, uh, there's an Amazon buy box and an FBA calculated price. Can you explain the difference? So between the Amazon buy box and the FBA calculated price, you kind of talked about it, but just go over that again. Yeah, sure thing. So, so um, if I was to go to Amazon uh, right now, on um, let's see this Gator Golf here, which has a buy box of, this is cached by the way. Okay, I should explain that's cached. So it was forty nine ninety six when it was, um, when it was sent to the uh, sent to the database originally, the original scan was had taken place. It is still forty nine ninety six. So the so the scan wasn't too long ago. So if I was to go to have a look at this column here, this thirty six dollars twenty one. This is um, after Amazon has taken their referral fee, their pick and pay. Basically, at the end of the at the end of the day, they're gonna if you sell one of those for forty nine dollars ninety six, Amazon's going to give you $36.21. That's great if you bought it for $18.39. It's giving you $17.82 profit. That's nearly 100% gross return on investment. And, uh, you know, it seems to be selling fairly well. You know, that one, it's funny, that one is showing up in pre-kindergarten toys as the rank. Um, I don't know if it's a subcategory of toys and games, but that one is funny that's showing pre-kindergarten toys there. Yeah, that's yeah. It's a bit difficult to read that graph because there is some fluctuation in the sales rank. Mm -hmm. um, but but there is a possibility that um, it's not selling as well. Let me just duck over here and have a look. The seventy-one customer reviews. Um, this is my other little little go-to. Um, yeah, I see that a lot of those customer reviews were sort of about six months ago, and the price. Um, I guess we can get into some analysis all day long, but as you say, that that might be a factor. We've been asked actually to do uh, a feature which we're looking at integrating, which will automatically remove anything over a certain percent of of the rank. So let's say we have in there um, instead of a rank filter, or probably as well as, or instead of you, you choose, um, it'll we'll, we'll have the option there: remove ranks over. 
um, 1% of the top 1% Amazon items. Mm -hmm. so, so what it'll do is, is if pre-kindergarten toys top 1% rank is only 40,000, for instance, or lower than that, it'll remove that item. Does yeah. that make sense? Like it'll, it'll only, it'll go through and category by category, it'll determine whether or not to keep an item based on rank. So you haven't actually got to go in there and, and alter that um, every single time, depending on whether you're scanning shoes or toys or, or whatnot. But that is a good point about that. That, 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 that may seem like a nice profitable item, but with that category um, and that keeper graph, then maybe it's not one to rush to Walmart and grab everything off the shelf. So. I think I saw when you went to the page, it showed like 120,000 in toys. So it wasn't horrible. It just was, it was. Horrible. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really not bad. It's just one of those ones that has a couple like pre or so. <coughs> yep. Uh, Sorry about my cough. My kid bought something home from daycare and um and and we've been we, she she's good she's but we're not so <laughs> <laughs> that's all right you're doing good <laughs> um so so one of the questions we have here um we might get into this later I don't know how much you like to compare your software to other people's software but there's usually at least one I, that <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't like to but it's a commonly asked question yeah um, so maybe I, we don't I have don't to like name it because both because both softwares or, or I should say all softwares um, rather than trying to specify one in particular because I can't actually see the chat right now I can only see my screen um, so I'm not sure what people have posted but assuming that's the question that I, I hear so often yeah um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I would I would suggest that you try the trials of both um, I, I happen to know the guys um, from the other softwares and they're lovely people and I would never want to say anything out of turn the softwares work differently. If you've used one trial, I suggest you also try my trial and see whether or not you enjoy it. I'd say one thing that people really like about my software and they keep on saying to me is a reason that they come back to it is we've got the ability to scan like multiple pages. So I set a URL here, I set page one to page say 30 and then I can walk away. But not only that, I can go use bulk and upload a new file and I can and we just added multi bulk okay so multi bulk so cool right so you can go um, on multi bulk your your CSV might look like this I want to scan all the toys on on target from page 1 to page 50 and then I want you to know, have a look at all of the shoes in the clearance category of finish line today now I want to also have a look at um, they're having this sale on cookware over at Coles, so can we also put that in there as well? And so you add in all these multi-bulk, um, multi-bulk, sorry, these multiple line um, CSVs, and then you walk away and you can let the software just finish one, move to the next one, finish that one, move to the next one. So you could be um, you could be doing your inventory management, you could be out having lunch with the kids. You can do whatever you like because the software is doing stuff for you in the background while you're away. And we set the we set the scanning limit to 24 hours before it stops. So if if you've got a scan that's super big, it'll stop after 24 hours. But um, can you imagine not having to come and have a look at a scan for 24 hours because it's just doing its own thing? It's finding you deals and profit. Like we've had people say, can you make it longer than 24? And I'm like, what a full day is not enough for you. My software has to have a little break in between each one. But but I, but I get it, you know. Um, and and uh, that's one of the features that I love about my own software is that you can actually just leave it run. And uh, yeah, uh, that's that's awesome. So I've used both of the big ones. A lot of people ask about. I've used TA and you know some of the other ones out there. And I, I'll say that's one of the biggest reasons I like TA a lot or one of the best features to me is that I can set something, go and check on the kid, you know, check on the baby and then come back and, you know, 30 minutes later and I have a full couple hundred products scan that I can then, you know, filter through real quick because um, otherwise you're kind of, you know, still manually clicking through pages and pages if you're using some of the other stuff out there. But I will say I, I really like your answer of check the free trials for both because that's the nice about this. Uh, there's a free trial. It's kind of like a no risk. Uh, check it out and see which one you like better or, you know, um, check whatever's out there. Don't just take Alex's word for it. Um, do your own research. But what I like about Alex is that he works super hard, like Andy already said, to make this better every day. And uh, that bulk feature, I think, is like 
hard for us to appreciate, Alex, people that aren't working on this all the time or if we're not super tech savvy, because that is a super cool feature. It's almost like, um, you know, back in the day when Amazon had the um, flat files that you could upload like a thousand Amazon listings at once. Um, it's almost like doing that. It, it just makes it faster now. Not everyone's going to want to use bulk files because they don't like to use Excel sheets or CSV. Um, so that's fine. You don't have to. You can use the um, normal way or you can use the bulk files eventually that will be really quick for the people that do want to do that. So I like that. One, one thing that you will need CSV for is well, we're integrating a new feature, which is, which is, I guess it's called CSV import um, in, a, in a way. And it, uh, we, the, the, the thing that sort of slowed the launch of this next feature um, is, is that I'm heading to ASD for, to Vegas. Um, so I, I don't really want them to release anything new while I'm not sitting at my desk all the time. But we're pretty close to releasing um, CSV import. So what will what that basically will entail is, um, let's say you've got a, a list of AS, ASIN, or do you call them ASINs or AS, I always call them ASIN. I, I say both. I say ASIN usually, but. <laughs> um, so you've got a list of ASINs, and we also want to make it so it's a list of UPCs as well for the wholesale guys. Um, so you'll be able to like load that in, and it'll tell you which stores of the 230 stores, um, have that have have those items um, normally on in stock, and what the prices of those items are, and whether or not there's any profit between what you're looking to buy uh, between what it's selling for on Amazon, and what it is at the at the uh, at the sourcing store. So this that CSV import feature is coming soon. We've been collecting a lot of data to get to the point that we can do this. We've got a, we've got almost 10 million products in the system. Um, it's, it's harder for us because um, we're not just matching this to uh, other stores with UPC. We're also going to um, risk putting in the, the slight, slightly more suspect matches by adding all the title match stores from all 230. There'll probably be a filter to flick on and off between UPC and title. But um, yeah, anyway, so that feature's coming soon. As is a feature where, uh, let's say you've got two of this particular product here, and Amazon is showing a bundle of two here. At the moment, um, sometimes there's some price mismatches where Amazon's got a two pack and it's matching with a one pack at Walmart. So we're going to have a little quantity button here where you can you can add the add the quantities and and uh, and and match those up. And of That's course, you got to save that. We've got, we've got a global a global matching database. Um, can I talk about the global matching database for just a second? This yeah, is I was a really. Gonna, Alex, I was going to say last time we had our webinar, we, you were just going to, you were just about to come out with the global matching. You were excited about it, so let's talk about that. What is the global matching, and what does that allow users to do? Okay, so um, let me see if I can find one here that doesn't match. That chessboard down there, I'm not sure if it does exactly. Chessboard. It's going to be hard to find an exact match on a generic okay. chessboard. <laughs> I'll let you do but it. Let me let me show you. Let's 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 assume this Gator Golf one does not match. Okay. So um, what I can do is I can search on Amazon to try and find the right match. So once I've found the right match, I go in there and I'll come down and I'll grab the ASIN and I will um, come over here and I can edit the ASIN. And I can paste it into there, and I can hit save. I won't because I'm just going to be replacing one for the other. Um, and what it'll do is it'll turn it purple. So this one here was not originally a match. Some per, some nice person, uh, one of my members, has come in and said, "Hey, this is this is." In fact, I don't know if I really like their match. And no, 99 times out of 100, the match is perfect. But box art is important to me. I don't think that box art is identical. Um, so I might just have a look if I can improve the quality on on that one. To me, it looks like this so basically second one here, or well, this third one here is, is a better match. Um, but then again, I can see why they've matched it with this one because this one's got all the reviews and it probably is the same product. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm digressing. So the short version is this. If you see two products that don't match, 
you can go in there and, and put the correct match into the system. This affects everybody's um, searches. So every single member will now see the correct match in their results. So this is increasing all the time. Since we launched this, we've had maybe 10,000 products that have, for some reason or another, the algorithm has missed them and the match hasn't been perfect. And a customer has decided to come in there, well, I say customer, but a member has decided to come in there and, um, and fix it up in the database and every single person sees a correct match next time. So we also want to incentivize that. So we turn it into a bit of a game which changes every month. So for this month, um, people who make over 100 matches get a $10 rebate back in their PayPal account. If they make over 180 matches, they get a $20 rebate. And if they make over 500 matches, they get the $20 rebate, plus they get, um, they get one advanced panel site added that we guarantee not to add into the main software for the next, um, I think it's six months. So even if we decide that we want to add it, um, if, if, you've, if you've won this competition, then you don't get um, that competition for six months. So every month these rules change, and it's just a little game that I like, I like to play with my members to encourage people to, to, to keep on adding to that global matching database. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, so basically, it's nice because there's always, like you said, there's always, for some reason, it's not going to be perfect, and usually it's because the UPC is like a little bit different on Amazon or something, but for some reason, it's not going to always be perfect, and when you actually have the members going in and you have people, you know, who are actually looking at these products and matching it, it's just going to be more accurate than you ever can with just the software alone, so I think it's a really cool concept. I like that you did that, and then you kind of gamified it with uh, incentives <coughs> for people. I think it's really nice, so, and you've been happy with how that's been working out so far? Yeah, it's been really good actually. We um, because these UPC sites are nice. You don't get a lot of mismatches, but you, you, you occasionally do. Um, but when you're looking at some of the more title matched sites, uh, the title matches will um, periodically have uh, mismatches. Mm. Uh, we have a, we have a list of sourcing domains which actually tell you whether it's a UPC site match or if it's title. And we're trying to get a little bit of um. A little bit of insight into whether or not it's a very good match because you know 6 p.m. for instance is uh, it's not UPC matching but the way that it extracts the the brand and the name of the shoe from 6 p.m. means that the match in our Amazon is still very very good and we, we get um, most most products match but um you know the, today we deactivated big lots because um, the title matching on that is poor if you go to big lots and have a look they don't have UPC a universal product code in there, and uh, and the title matches are just they're just really poorly written. It it might just say like you know 15 inch chessboard for instance, without the brand or anything, and uh, so the match is quite bad. So um, that one's actually just fall, fallen off for now. While we look to see if we can improve the algorithms for that one. But anyway, to get back to what we were saying, because I do digress a lot. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll just. Say real quick, so like a lot of websites like Best Buy or Walmart, I saw there, when you go to the website, the UPC code is somewhere on the page or somewhere where tactical arbitrage can grab it for to put it into the software. But other websites just don't have the universal product code on there, and so you have to grab whatever the title is and match it. And those ones can be a little trickier. That's why there's like different levels. I see there's poor, medium, high, because it just they depends be how well written. It's, it's really hard to quantify like title dash average title dash very good because, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, because the toy category might be perfect with just everyone matching over and over and then you get to a shoe category on the exact same site and it doesn't match as well. So it's, mm. it's, um, it, it really just comes from using the software and you'll, you'll see uh, this one's not, not, not matching as well and this one's matching great. But um, We've got so many UPC sites and so many very good title matching sites, and we have this. This document is also public and available to everybody. Um, there's no reason why uh, those those mismatches. And if you find a mismatch, I'll tell you what: it's a massive opportunity. The other day, I sat down for half an hour and I made a video, which I just uploaded to YouTube, of me just finding like deliberately looking for mismatches and ma and making the match myself. Two of the first few matches were actually profitable items. So by doing the right thing by the community and making the match, I actually found stuff that nobody else had found yet. 
some viable stuff. So um, it's 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 a really good system. I love it. <laughs> I just um, I'm, I'm in love with my own software, and I know that, that <laughs> sounds I know that, that sounds stupid, but um, no, I, I, I think I, it shows because I think it shows that you have a passion about it because every day, probably from the time you get up to the time you go to sleep, it seems like TA is on your mind and it comes through in your work because uh, my wife must hate me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, it, it comes through in the, in the Facebook group. All I see is good things about the software because um, if there's an issue, like a, a member is having an issue with something or they, um, you know, have a suggestion, you're really open to more open than I've ever seen anyone with their own software be to like catering to those needs. Because most people, when they develop something like you've, you know, technical arbitrage is your baby. Usually you're kind of like, I want to do it my way. Uh, but I've seen you so far with everyone kind of be like, okay, yeah, I'm open to doing that. And, you know, I wanted to do it this way, but I'm willing to, you know, put that on hold to help out with these hundred people. Want. So I think that's really cool. Um, I think people appreciate that. Um, and, and hey, I know we have uh, probably more to say, but we're um, 40 minutes in here. So I, I wanted to get out real quick. Um, you have a coupon code for everyone that's here and for us, for uh, our group for the next couple of days. So I was hoping we could just give that out to people um, in case they're not able to stay for the whole thing. Do you mind if we take a quick break and you just yeah. explain that to us? Absolutely. Can, and after, after that, do you mind if I quickly show Amazon flips after that? Just, uh, yeah, it's just such a powerful feature. We'd, it'd be a shame to leave that. Um, yeah. Leave. Should, we, should we do that first real quick? If you like, I can, I can go over it. I'll give myself a, a 120 second warning. Okay. Yeah. You just, uh, you, pl you, you, play, you play me out when it comes time to that 120 seconds. Let's just take five minutes and we'll get this, guys, because Amazon Flips, this is a newer feature just in the last, like, two weeks, right, Alex? Amazon Flips, you could, you could only use this software for Amazon Flips and make killer amounts of, of money. Anybody who, who buys off Amazon and then sells um, and then sends back to Amazon and then, and then sells that item again, who has done that and made profit knows the power of Amazon Flips. The rule is you don't, you never use a Prime account or a Prime shipping to um, purchase the item that you're going to flip. That's the key rule. But um, if you if you've done Amazon Flips before, you know the power in it. So what we did is we we're working directly with Keeper, and uh, we we working with their API, and we've got a system here in a new form. So you enter in your URL of the page that you wanted to look at on Amazon. And this includes movers and shakers because because often items are in movers and shakers for a reason. Um, you enter your first and last page and uh, your filters, and it'll go through and it'll return you keeper graphs. And we we set this up in such a way that we really want to show you the keeper graphs that are most interesting to look at, so so that you're not sort of swamped with a bunch of graphs that um, are lit, like like this sort of a graph here where Amazon can't stay in stock at all. They seem to sell out as soon as they're in stock. And when they are in stock, it's, it's selling for $10. But when they're out of stock, it's selling for $22. Or, uh, you know, this sort of thing. Amazon just cannot seem to stay in stock. And when they're not in stock, it's selling for, uh, for over $40. And when they are in stock, you can pick it up for $22. So there's these flip opportunities there. And we've structured these filters in such a way that you can either take advantage of things that are flippable today because they are they are currently at a low price, or they're structured in such a way that you can find an item that you might then go and choose to track. You can use your keeper setup and and track and track those within Keeper, and you get sent alerts through um, Twitter or your Facebook accounts. So, so we're currently um, adding more and more features to this all the time, and the feature that I added. This week is to explore variations. So if you're if you're scanning shoes, for instance, it'll get to a shoe ASIN, and then it'll it'll say, "Hang on a minute, this has got 50 variations. It's got black size eight and black size seven and brown size nine and brown. We need to have a look at all those too and check out all those keeper graphs. So if you tick explore variations, it'll actually go before it even moves on to product two. It'll look at all the variations or all the child ASINs um, to let you know whether there's any potential keeper flips in there as well. So, um, so this is a cool new feature. We've been asked if we can slice Amazon flips off and make it a standalone feature. Um, so we're looking to do to do that um, in the near future, so that there's um, an option to have Amazon flips 
just by itself. But um, at the moment, it's all part of the bundle. And that's, that's uh, hopefully enough of a 120 second walkthrough of Amazon Flips. Yeah, that's good. That, uh, Basically, is that everything that's you need to know on that? Like you, well, I'm sure we could talk about that for hours. <laughs> but but that's a good overview and basically this, this so right now that's with, right now that's with it but it like you said it could be a standalone thing because that alone is like just awesome and could keep you busy all day so that's cool um, yeah 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 so, Amazon like you know what you know what's cool about Amazon flips you can run a product search and it doesn't actually use the same channels um, it doesn't tie up it doesn't tie up the system the same way that Amazon Flips ties up the system. So you can simultaneously run a product search scan and an Amazon Flips scan. So they can be running in parallel. So that's two, two potential profit streams happening side by side. Okay, so yeah, I was going to ask you that. So you can run both at one time? Absolutely. Okay, that's, that's cool. So I could see why it could be a standalone thing as well, like you're saying, because <coughs> you basically can do both at once. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't require um, MWS keys to be in there. Uh, although we do, we do actually utilize a small part of the US for for shoe variation sales ranks. So, um, so we do utilize part of it for that. It's better to have it in there. So, um, very cool. So, so I don't there, is, there is more, but I think that's enough for you to go through for now. <laughs> yeah, there is. There's a more, more bits and pieces that are in there, product variation scans and that sort of thing. But, uh, but uh, we do have some, I'll let you get. We do have some questions, so we'll get to those in a second. But I just want to real quick um, explain to us, you know, you, you already said you're going to ASD here coming up. So explain to everyone the cool discount that you have or, or the codes that you have for us, and then I'll bring that up on my screen here. Okay, cool. I'll, I'm going to stop screen sharing at this point. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, share mine in one second here when I can bring that up. All right, guys. So, um, so hopefully, Alex, can you see my screen here? Yeah. Okay, so um, all the eights, lucky eights, all the eights. Uh, if you're going to go to Vegas, then, um, you know, lucky number eight. So we're doing $88 a month with an eight-day trial. So it's it's only until um, Vegas uh, Amazon ASD is over. So until the end of August the third, and then that um, and that deal is going to close because this is specifically for um, the ASD on uh, ASD conference in Vegas. Okay. Yeah. So so Vegas eighty eight. If you go to that link there, the uh, HTTP dash dash. Um, tactical arbitrage. You type that link in, and, and you use the Vegas eighty eight coupon code. It's going to lock in for life, Alex, at eighty eight dollars a month price point. Yeah, that's going to be grandfathered for life. So, um, you know, one of the things that we're going to be talking about at Vegas, and I've got to sit down with a couple of people there. We've we've been talking about how powerful the Amazon Flips feature is, and how how there's potential there to have product search by itself as as a as a piece of software amazon flips is a piece of software and a bundle of the two as a piece of software mm -hmm. and um it's uh, there's a, there's a very realistic chance i'm going to come away from this conference with a different pricing structure but if you've already got 88 dollars a month um in like locked in with the amazon flips and product search then that's grandfathered in so you'll automatically be on that on that price um, for the life of your membership, regardless of what little bits of fiddling I do down the track to the price or the structure of tactical arbitrage. Yeah, so basically what he's saying is you're going to want to get in now if you can. <laughs> but what I like is when we did this webinar a month ago, um, you know, we were saying how much value was there with, with everything we were saying. And, you know, even just looking at that a month or maybe a month and a half ago, it's crazy how much more value there is just with what you showed us, especially the Amazon flips and, um, you know, the cash data and the global um, uh, fixing. All of that together has made it, you know, even more value. So I really like that you're improving it. And by locking this in now, guys, if we lock in this price now, just think about, you know, a couple more months down the road, what this is going to look, look like by the time we even just get to Q4. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm excited. 
you know, I'm excited for the first Q4 of Tactical Arbitrage because, you know, that's really where <laughs> we're going to see this shine. I mean, it's, it's been working well for me. I've been using it the last couple months um, in the summer where it can be a little bit tougher to do, you know, RA and OA stuff. I'm excited to see Tactical Arbitrage re uh, really shine this Q4. Um, oh, T TA is going to be running hot on Black Friday because <laughs> the de those deals are going to come in. And the smart TA people are going to have all their URLs ready to go. And the second that those deals are unlocked online, that scan, the scan is going to start. And then, and, and then the, the purchases are going to happen as, as like, like lightning fast. I, I think TA is going to clear out a lot of stores this year. <laughs> And I'm sure you're going to have your, your guys <laughs> saying, like, boost the servers, boost the server. <laughs> your servers are going to get hit hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, we have a couple. Oh, my God. I'll get, I'll, get, I'll get slaughtered if the, servers aren't, if the servers aren't running at full speed that day. <laughs> yeah. We have a couple questions here. Um, Brian's saying, you know, there's so much stuff here. It's like Aladdin's cave. I like that, uh, I like that comparison, Brian. <laughs> um, but, Alex, maybe we could. Maybe you can go back to sharing your screen now. So, guys, I think that covers, you know, the overview of TA. Um, you see all the features. Now, Alex, if you have, do you have a few more minutes for us? We can just answer some of the questions here. Absolutely. Yeah, let's go back to sharing your screen. Let's just pull back a TA. I'll stop my share here. Um, and basically, you know, guys, if you, if you want to type there in your Q&A box, ask any questions that you have. Um, while you have Alex here live with us, might as well get those questions in. Um, and then in I'm chat, sure I, can, I can, oh, hang on, I can see, uh, I can, yeah, I can put this over in my second monitor, I can see some of the questions, otherwise you can just yell some out to me, it's probably easy too. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Phil wants to know where you're located at in Australia, so we'll get that out of the way first. Uh, I'm in, I'm in North Brisbane. Um, Adam, can't, Adam, Adam Black can't wait for to clear out some stores. I know Adam's going to be clearing out stores. Uh, uh, Adam, Adam Black's going to meet me in Vegas, and we're going to clear out some, some bars is what we're going to clear out. <laughs> so um, David just posted in the chat here, guys, um, Alex's Facebook group. I was just going to ask Alex to do that, but David already did. So, um, Alex, you have a Facebook group called Tactical Arbitrage that I, is dedicated I do, and if, I do, and if you see um, – let me close all this stuff. If you see um, – if you see that there's no cover on the page today, this is a, fa a Facebook issue. I don't know why. That'll be gone. That'll be gone tomorrow, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, F FBA Tactical Arbitrage is the group. Yeah, so if, if people join that, they can, because um, someone asked where they can do uh, send feature requests. Is that the best place to like request additional features in the future? So you can either um, you can either send requests there. Uh, you can PM me requests, or you can use the support link on the page here. I get them and I collate them all. I've actually got uh, maybe twenty five pages of requests, and my developers um, and I have been working on putting those into a uh, there's a there's a um, a management system called Asana, and we've been going through Asana and and putting uh, all those all those jobs into each page because we want to add. Pretty much everything, um, including the the ideas that I keep throwing at them as well, and uh, they're happy for the work, but they also hate me. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. And um, Jeff Jeff says here, using the Walmart example, um, if I get a list of products that fit my TA filtering criteria, what approach do you use to see if you're getting the best price for each product compared to other stores? So. So how do we make sure that we're getting the best price compared to the other stores that are out there potentially? Do you, do you have anything like that yet or is that one of those things like you were talking about coming up? I, I believe that when, um, when the CSV upload feature is integrated, um, which, which won't be too far away, that that system that you're talking about will be a little clearer. Um, and I like to think it'll be um, in the spirit of tactical arbitrage, as polished as possible, so that you'll really be able to sort of see the kind of the kind of answers that I know that you're looking for in that question. Okay, so I, I know that is on your radar, though. Um, definitely, definitely. You know, Joe asks, is bulk is using the bulk feature really the best way to use TA? Is that how you get the most out of it? Do you have to use bulk, or can you still get a lot of value without using it? Well, that's a that's a good question. Okay, bulk's really handy if you've got a bunch of stuff to do, and um, and you and I, I like using bulk if I'm curious about something. If I'm curious about whether or not 
hand tools on Coles, or not, maybe Coles hasn't got a lot of hand tools, but hand tools on say Sears has got um, anything anything profitable. I might use bulk to put a bunch of categories in there that I haven't really looked at. But the way that I really like to use tactical arbitrage myself is to go and is to find coupons. One thing I didn't mention is we're about to add a coupon RSS feed, which is purely tied into just the stores that we have on tactical arbitrage. So you should be able to see at a glance any of the stores that currently have uh, coupons, like right here in within tactical arbitrage. So that's coming very soon. Um, anyway, so I like to find where the deals are. Um, and then I like to, to, to try and stack that with um, cashback sites and gift cards. And then I like to go in there and I like to run those specific categories related to those particular deals um, and extract, uh, extract what I'm going to buy that way. Now, there's no reason why with the new multi-bulk um, scenario that you can't do that. Although I love these webinars because I think of new ideas even when I'm having them. And I'm realizing now that with multi-bulk, each, each, each row really needs um, all of the information. So the filters for each search need to go in there as well. So if you've got an 8% off deal at Target, you need to have that in here and then a 15% off deal in PetSmart. So we need to have those uh, individually placed into that multi-bulk CSV to make that, um, to make that even better. Um, I, I don't, nobody asked this question, but I just remembered I, I mentioned Cache 2.0 before. Um, Cache 2.0 is a new feature where uh, you get this list, for instance. So this might be four days old, but there'll be a button up here which says update um, Amazon prices. So um, it, makes, it makes the fact that it's Cache um, not so bad that it's Cache because you can hit the update Amazon prices and it'll automatically go through and, and update ding, 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 in a space of a few seconds, um, everything on the page here, which will update your gross profit ROI. So it kind of takes away the fear of using Cache and having outdated data. So that's coming, um, that's coming this week. So. Lots of things, lots and lots of things. Any other questions on there? Um, yeah, I think we have a couple more questions. So guys, if you have any other questions while we have Alex live here, just type them in the Q&A box. So, so I do have a, I have a personal question. Do you, is your plan right now for like the rest of this year to just keep trying to like bust out new features every day? Cause I, I'm kind of thinking to myself, like the pace that you've been releasing new stuff is crazy. I'm wondering when you're going to take a break. Are you just trying to, you know, make this the best, like blow everything else out of the water, make this the best thing out there and just keep improving it? Is that your plan for the next foreseeable future? That 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 is my plan because there's so there's so much that can be done, uh, which you know we, we like. There's Keeper has a new feature, okay, which um, if it's just been integrated into their API, where uh, without breaching any of Amazon's terms of services, I should be able to go into um, these new sellers and mouse over here, for instance, and see. Uh, which what what's in stock of each of the sellers um, currently without actually using um, without actually scraping Amazon in a way that breaches any terms of services I can use an API for that so that's something that um, I'll be adding soon and all the time these little changes are happening in the back end and uh, and other APIs that we're integrating and you know we've got some grossly underutilized features here this advanced user feature is super powerful people who are using that I know there's people that are using that adding all their own sites they barely even use the main sites on product search because they're killing it with the sites that they're adding by themselves um, Amazon flips feature uh, there is so much profit in there it's ridiculous I, I wasn't able to trade for a long time because I've been working on this but when I started using the Amazon flips again I couldn't help but send a bunch of stuff into my FBA prep and ship house because it was just it's just like leaving money on the on the floor too, if I didn't too good so, to pass up <laughs> yes so but to answer your question um, yeah I, I just I, I'm passionate about this I really want this to be the best it can be I listen to my members and when people tell me all the time this could be a, this could be uh, improve this with with this somebody said to me just yesterday can we put the sales rank over here next to the buy box and stuff so we might make it that you can shuffle these around and put them in whatever order that you want so we get stuff we get questions all the time I have a lot of ideas all the time 
and I'm, I'm just going to keep working on it. And if I run out of things to put in there, which I, which I doubt is going to happen in a hurry, um, I'm just going to add as many sites as possible uh, so, that, so that the sourcing choice covers like such a wide gamut of the internet. And of course, the cross country thing is going to be massive. If once, you know, Germany is such a huge Amazon site. If you were to be able to get some stuff from the States, which, um, which you know, was selling well in Germany, that cross country thing is going to be huge. And we're going to e enter in all the stores like Japan and Germany and France. And, and uh, anyway, I could, I could ramble on all day. And uh, I'm sure that when I get um, some of you uh, to one side in, in Vegas, if I meet some of you guys there, then we'll, we'll sit down over a drink and discuss it some more too. All right, so we have just a couple more questions here. We'll, we'll finish it off here, guys. Um, so last call for questions while we have Alex. And I'm going to throw this up on the screen uh, real quick again. Uh, guys, uh, like Alex has said, all these features that we have, you can lock in both the main uh, search features on Tactical Arbitrage and the Amazon, the Amazon Flips for this $88 a month price. And in the future, they might be separate completely, you know, they might, they might both be higher than that price. So you're getting it both for $88 now. Um, if you lock that in, you can use that uh, link there and then use the coupon code Vegas 88 there. Um, and then I'll ask these last couple questions. Um, uh, we have a question saying, if you can just elaborate again, Alex, on the, how the UPC upload would work. Uh, this person's looking for a tool that will retrieve the associated ASIN sales rank and price for a huge list of UPCs. So, if someone uploaded a bunch of UPCs, do you think it would give them the ASIN, the sales rank, and the price? If if it's in our if it's in our system and it's being cached, that connection, the connection between the UPC and the ASIN will uh, already be saved in our database, and uh, and so therefore an upload of a an upload of a UPC will match that alongside the ASIN, which will give the sales rank and um, and price. So yeah. That will be uh, that will be an option. Okay, and then uh, they ask, uh, basically asking about what sites are supported versus other um, services like OAX Ray. Um, I know that they have all the sites that they support on their site, so you can go there. And then Alex does on his site as well. Um, so we don't have to get into who does what, but we you can go there and check yourselves. So it, it'll only take you a minute. So. Um, and if, you see, if you see a site that I don't have and you want to just message me and I'll add it. So. Yeah, that's the cool thing. Alex is super open just uh, in that Facebook group that we put in the chat. You guys can visit that. Um, it's uh, FBA Tactical Arbitrage. Um, join that group if you haven't. Uh, what would you say to those who are concerned that there will be too many subscribers? Um, I'll answer that by saying what Alex just said, that he already has over 200 websites on here and is planning to get up to 500. So like I was saying, the ratio of available sites to members is never going to be, like, it's just not even possible that it'll be too high. And the other thing is with the advanced user options like Alex was talking about, um, you know, if you're concerned that there's too many other subscribers, you basically can go in and make your own, you know, add your own site and have limited competition. That's what I would say. What, what would you say, Alex? I'm sure you get that question a lot. I agree. Well, I, I, can, I can see in the back end that the Amazon Flips feature is being grossly under, underutilized. The, <laughs> advanced, the advanced user panel is being grossly underutilized. There is um, too many people just searching target toys, and and uh, and 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 that's there's always going to be saturated in the most obvious category. You need to come into this with a little bit of lateral thinking. Um, that there is there's not we don't have as many members as people probably think we have members, and there's not a saturation issue at this point. Um, but uh, we are growing. And we are matching that growth with options and uh, and places to source from. And I cannot see there being a saturation issue, particularly by anybody using the site with um, a little bit of lateral thought um, for a very long time. Yeah, no, I think you said that really well. Um, whoops, let me go back here. Uh, so we have a question. Is there a video on how to do the AZ Flips product search? So let's go back to your screen share. Do you want to just show us real quick? You talked to me you have like training videos and you're making more. Do you have, don't you have like a page that shows all those? I'll let you get to that if you need to. Um, but I know that you have training videos and uh, you're making more at like within this next week. I know you just told me not long ago. So I, I began, I began uh, a series of um, videos 
basically to, to show things like, you know, what is the dashboard, how to do product search, how do the filters work on the on the dash on the product search? What is view a view data? And um, most recently, Amazon flips. Uh, I would encourage people to watch the videos. Some of them I ramble a bit, but um, for the most part, you can you can get through those videos in about an hour, I guess. Uh, and uh, on top of that, there's going to be more coming out all the time. Yeah, so so there are training videos, and there's going to be more and more. And uh, a lot of the training occurs right in the Facebook group as well. I will say, um, people like ask questions, and almost like other members will give training advice. So uh, so it's going to be there, and more is coming out. Um, so that's good. Uh, David asks if there if <coughs> someone's current. So this is for current or past users that have their Amazon associate info entered. Uh, are we supposed to change it now? I know I saw you say something about that in the Facebook group. Do you want to just tell, let us know real quick or direct them to where they can go? Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, I don't want to open my settings page because it'll, it'll show my keys. But, oh, um, but, but on, the, uh, on the settings page at the top now, it says um, MWS or AWS. And you select MWS and you put in your MWS keys, which um, it's a super simple PDF to follow like I showed before. Um, now, we are going to phase out AWS, um, and I've given a date on that of uh, the 8-8-2016. So I would like anybody with an associate um, account to shift to the MWS system by uh, 8th of August 2016. Um, we are already, we are already um, not collecting any cached information from an AWS search, and there is already one feature in Amazon Flips that only works for MWS. So development is shifting away from supporting AWS, and it is recommended to shift to MWS um, uh, as soon as you can. And it's not hard. It's, it's, it's super simple. You just go to settings, you change your drop-down box from AWS to MWS, and you follow this two-minute PDF, and you're operational. There's, there's, there's no time delay. Yep, and that's only for past users. Anyone that's new doesn't even have to deal with it because they'll only, you only know the new and easy feature, so don't even worry about it. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, any new features is actually still going to see a drop-down box at MWS and AWS, but just make sure you just pick MWS like it says in the PDF, and you'll be fine. Uh, that the AWS option won't even be visible uh, by the eighth of the eighth. It's going to be, it's going to be gone. All right, and I'm just going to answer a couple more here, guys, because uh, we want Alex to be able to go out for his lunch if he needs to. <laughs> but um, one person, uh, I'll answer this real quick, says, why did you say never use a Prime account for Amazon Flips? Um, so you're not supposed to use an Amazon Prime account to purchase uh, products from Amazon that you're going to sell back on Amazon that's just against their TOS. So it's always recommended to use a non-Prime account or a business account if you're going to be doing that. Um, George says that they're using the trial now. Can I use the Vegas 88 code to get the discounted <coughs> price? Sure, hey, George, some... just, just, just message me on um, just message me on Facebook, and uh, I'll apply that Vegas 88 code to your account. Just I need to know your registered email address and and um, what what you're currently registered as with us, so I can check that out. All right. Thank, yeah, thanks for doing that. So anyone that's currently doing a um, trial with TA, if you want to just message Alex, uh, uh, you know, be aware of his time difference, guys, too. So Alex is like 14 hours ahead of East Coast, um, at least 11 hours ahead of the West Coast, probably. So, you know, be aware or be courteous to that, but um, just send him a message and he's really good about getting back to people. Um, Ken asks when a replay will be available. We'll get that out either tonight or tomorrow for you, Ken. Um, and I have a couple more questions. I'll, this last question here. Um, will TA product search results exclude or show if the product is uh, restricted on Amazon? Is that uh, something you do, Alex? No, it's not. Um, this, is, this, is, this is crazy because Amazon has got an app, you know, when you scan in, in the stores. It's a retail arbitrage kind of an app, um, which will actually show you if it's restricted. But, um, but that information is not available in their, in their APIs. However, there isn't there is an API out there that we are in communication with integrating, um, which may have that data that we need to to show whether the item is restricted. But I 
that doesn't completely scratch my itch because what I really, really want it to do um, before, and this is what I'm looking into, what I really want it to do is determine whether or not the item is specifically restricted to you. So you might not be able to sell Star Wars products, but another guy might be able to. So I want it to sort of, I, I, I want to find a, a way, and um, I, I, I hate letting you know that I'm still working things out. I like to pretend I know everything, but I don't know the answer to this yet. I want to see if I can find a way to um, have it talk to your account personally and let you know whether you're ungated or gated in that, or whether or not you are restricted or not restricted in that. And, uh, and, and, and that, um, so far, has been an elusive stepping stone. All right. Um, I think we'll wrap it up here, Alex. You answered a lot, and I know you have a cold, and <laughs> your throat's probably ragged. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, <coughs> Andy and I really appreciate it. I don't know if we lost Andy um, on here through it, but uh, uh, we really appreciate it. Andy is an affiliate for Alex, so if you use that link, he is an affiliate. Um, he has told me, you know, we both talk about Alex all the time. He's a really great guy. We were able to hang out with him in Denver recently, um, and we were just, you know, he, he's super nice, and we're continually blown away by all the features and work that he's putting into TA. And I think, you know, just by this webinar and anyone that's used TA uh, really observes that and notices it. So we appreciate you, Alex. Thank you for taking the time uh, out of your busy schedule to, to go through this with us. And thank you for this really good opportunity, the coupon code, guys. So if you use that link and you go to Vegas, uh, go to that link and you use the code Vegas88 until August 3rd or 4th, you said, I think that's good too, Alex. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So thank, thank you for that coupon code because locking in that price now is huge um, just because pricing may be going up very soon here um, and Amazon flips, which is an awesome feature, might not be available. So thank you so much for your time. That'll be all for tonight and hopefully we can get you on um, in a little bit in like another month or two because I'm sure we're going to have just as many new features to talk about again. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate it. So that'll do it for us tonight. Um, thanks everyone who stopped by and we will have a webinar or a replay of the webinar available for you soon. So. That'll Thanks, be all. Guys. Thanks, everyone. All right, guys. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Yep, see ya.